I'm Norma Jean White right now. But I have been Marie Wilson. And I took the name of my first marriage, King. So I went by Marie King all the time. I was working at a bar down in Madison called the Town Tavern. It's not there no more. And Jess Coe had went to jail for something, and I didn't have nowhere to sleep at night. His dad and mom, all of them were onto me because I called the law and he went to jail. And then I got out of work that night. Someone had come and told uh, my boss that he was coming down there. He was getting out of jail and he was coming down there. He didn't want me working in that jail. So I just told the lady to give me my paycheck. I was leaving. And she said, you're not leaving. We fired, we fired you because we don't want you here. Uh-oh. Do you want to answer them and we'll keep going? Hello? What's the, tell me about, what would you think is the difference between wildness and craziness? There's difference in it. The wildness is just born in them and um, makes you happy. But the craziness is just being a fool and taking advantage of people and doing the things you want to do and doing it your way. Getting ahead of everybody. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. And which are, are the whites more wild or more crazy? Um, it's in between, honey. At one time, when we were all back in the young days, when Sue Ann and um, all of them were like five years old. See, I stayed with Mom and them for a long time. And it, everything was beautiful then. It, it was just going to church and doing the things, the right things, and trying, trying to do the right things. But then... Um, after we had moved uh, over to a printer, that's when everything started getting out of hand. We did drugs too, you know, the whole deal. We um, did everything. We robbed people. We beat people. We did it all. Anything that, that was dangerous and hurt to someone when you see blood, that's what made us all happy. Wrecking cars, tearing our cars up. Oh yes, I love Tassel. All of us did. He was a wild, crazy man. Beautiful. He was good to people. But everybody took advantage of him. All of his friends even took advantage of him. They would tear up his stuff when he would go in the places to play his music. His guitars. I've seen him get so mad, I've seen him bust his guitars. But otherwise, he was a wonderful person. What are some things you'd like people to know about Hassel that maybe they don't? That he was a good man. That he wasn't crazy. He was just a wild thing. Would and, you, um... Would you say a few words about his music? What you thought about his music? Yeah. Oh, it was crazy. But the good times when we sang, um... Honky Tonk Angels and our country music and stuff, everything was beautiful. But when he got in that wild stuff, I got away from him. I, I thought he was done gone. I was ready to leave then. And um, all the girls would be jealous. That's why they tried to get him to take them home with them. And uh, he would go home with them sometimes. But after our fight, I never did go back no more when I busted his guitar. I busted it over the table where he was drinking his beer. And that was in um, about 70, 72, 73, somewhere along there. So you had the distinction of, of having dated both Hassel and Jessica. Yeah, but Jessica didn't know it at that time because I didn't know Jessica then. That was just a year or two before I met Jessica. Jessica knows that because I would meet him at the post office in uh, Madison, and he wondered why I was talking to that man. He was, was Hassel was the man. He said, "How do you know him? Why are you talking to him like that?" And it, it and then they grew into a good friendship. And Hassel loved Jessica too. He was they yeah, were. the best of friends. Uh, Catherine, she lives down in Parkersburg. It's called a little town called Creston. And she's a quilt maker. She uh, makes and sells quilts. 
and her family's grown up and gone. I have, uh, let's see, three, four grandchildren by her, and um, then I have um, three grandchildren by Leanne's mommy, Debbie, three girls, and now I have 16 great-grandchildren. Oh, um, Vernon, no, Vernon's the one that's down at Parkersburg. I've got one son that's alive. He's 42 years old. Um, but Stephen was 26 years old in 82, and he killed himself. He killed himself out in Pennsylvania. And, um, then Timmy was 2002, and he died from a liver problem. He had cirrhosis of the liver, and it was a very bad time in my life. But just that was there for me for that. Then after, after my son, the one that's 26, Stephen died. My daddy died two months later, and it, it just all been bad for me. And. Um, now I get to see my son, Vernon Jr. His family doesn't come around because of Jessica. They don't like the way he lives, the way he is. Uh, so I've lost them to that part. But the girls don't care. They, they argue back with him. Um, uh, Debbie, as a matter of fact, is one of the reasons when, when we separate this time, she had called the law because he had called her and said that he was going to kill me and the landlady and some people down in there. And that was another reason that he got evicted from here because he was always threatening people. But he would never hurt nobody. He tells you that, but he would never hurt nobody. And someone told me that one of your daughters that didn't like Jessica's been like writing stuff about him on the internet and stuff. Do you know about that at all? Yeah. Can you tell me all about that? And which yeah. daughter that is and all that stuff? She doesn't care about him knowing that it was her. Uh huh. Her thing is Kat. K A T. That's her name because she's Kathy. <clears throat> she told those people that um, was it an email on her backwards and forth. And she told them that if anybody wanted to know anything about her mommy's husband to call her because he had been her daddy for 32 years. She's not ashamed of him being her daddy, but she just don't want to come around him because he always starts something with her and makes her leave. But when she was drinking with him, when her husband was drinking with him, partying, going out and staying three and four days out of a week, and I wouldn't know where they're at. It was just fun. But now he, he's upset at Kathy. Oh, yeah, so. We went, he wore that coat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well. I've always kept that picture in my Now the kids is um, yeah, this one here is uh, one of a thousand. They sold them for fifteen dollars, and Jessica got two hundred dollars out of out of a thousand of them for fifteen dollars. And on the bottom of it, the reason I know it's mine and nobody can ever take it, Jessica wrote it on the bottom. Uh, it's two wife, Norma, and then it's got his name on the bottom. Number two. This was the second doll. He had number one, I had number two, and Duke, our dog that died, our big pit bull, we had 19 years. Um, he uh, sold his one for $100, and I guess, then I have another one that I got from a friend, but I got it hit in case I lose this one. So, that's, that's, Duke is in the dog house right there. See Duke? That's Duke. Oh, yeah. There's Duke's little water pan and food pan. <laughs> and this here is sitting over on the bottom of that table. The uh, tape don't play in it no more. His little zoom box here on top of this is 
zobar on that table. Whatever happened to your two pet turkeys you had? They died in the yard, Annie. They died in the yard? Yeah. You didn't um, eat them? No, we didn't got them to eat. Um, Rachel um, got on her nest and um, her eggs wasn't fertile and she died on her nest. Oh. She, I didn't know to take her off, you know, after so long and put rocks in her thing and I didn't know that. But uh, Fred was down in the yard, down in the creek there, under that big pine tree, and uh, they said that he died from a heart attack. He weighed 65 pounds. Wow. 65 pounds. <coughs> the red one, the red turkey. I guess he did have a heart attack. He did. I have no castles, no earthly kingdom, but a cabin will do, Lord, till I get home. My mansion yonder on the hills of glory, I want my mansion to sit near. God's throne. It'll make no matter who lives around me. Just so my mansion sits near God's throne. My mama's mansion may be close by me. Just across the golden avenue. She was the first one to ever teach me of heaven and the very first one, Lord, to ever teach me about you. Just build my mansion next door to Jesus and tell the angels I'm coming home. It'll make no difference who lives around me. Just so my mansion sits near God's throne. I always um, had that my testimony at church. I built my mansion next door to Jesus because I don't say much in church, but every time I go to church, that's my testimony. He said something about me singing the one about Hank. Mm -hmm. If I can remember it, I'll do the best I can on it. And now I have got to meet Hank three, and I got to party with him on his bus. And um, this was a song that I like to sing for him. Way back in West Virginia, between midnight and dawn, a big blue car was rolling. The wheels they hung a song. The chauffeur reached into the back. He shook the sleeping Hank. He said, Wake up, wake up, my friend. But Hank had went to a better land.